Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with Evening News. And the headlines. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia congratulates all young people who got vaccinated. MLA and Advisor R. King advises heads of departments to be responsible for all-round development of the newly created Zeminu district. Nagaland reports 89 fresh COVID-19 cases and 104 recoveries. An advisor to Nagaland Chief Minister Abu Mehta says government is trying to facilitate sports infrastructure and resources. As the number of COVID-19 cases are rising fast in several parts of the country, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain six feet for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075 and State Helpline number 1800-345-0019. And now the news in detail. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has said that over 3.5 crore children between 15 to 18 years of age have received first dose of COVID-19 vaccine since 3rd January. In a tweet, Mandavia congratulated all the young people who have got vaccinated. He said there is amazing enthusiasm among young India for COVID-19 vaccination. Meanwhile, over 158 crore four-like vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate is currently at 94.09%. Till now, 3 crore 53 like 94,882 people recovered from COVID-19. India's active caseload currently stands at 17 like 36,628. Active cases stand at 4.62%. Over 2,30,000 new cases were recorded in the last 24 hours. 8,891 total Omicron cases were detected so far, an increase of 8.31% yesterday. 310 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. The first District Planning and Development Board meeting of Zeminu District was held yesterday at the DC's conference hall, Zeminu, with MLA and advisor R. King. In his speech, King requested all the heads of departments under Zeminu District to be responsible for all round development. Deputy Commissioner Zeminu Dr. Zase Kule Trusi asked all the departments under Zeminu to submit their staff incumbency list to the DC's office immediately. The House also chalked out the programme for the forthcoming Republic Day celebration. The meeting was attended by Zeminu Superintendent of Police, Kanjan Kumar Kandpal, and all the heads of offices. Nagaland today reported 89 fresh COVID-19 cases, taking the total caseload to 33,053. 66 of the fresh cases were reported from Dimapu and 12 from Kohima. Beren reported four fresh cases, Zunobudo 3, Peg 2, and Mon and Mogukchung 1 each. Meanwhile, the state also recorded 104 recoveries in the past 24 hours, taking the total recovery to 30,624. Associate Vice President, Athletic Federation of India and Advisor to Nagaland Chief Minister Abu Mehta today graced the opening ceremony of 30th NASA D Games and Sports event as the special guest at Botsa village. Addressing the event, Abu Mehta said that government is trying to facilitate the infrastructure and resources for sports and games. He informed that the first regional centre for sporting excellence in the northeast will be inaugurated shortly at Sovima, Nagaland. Mehta said the new centre will provide a platform for the chosen sports persons to get intensive training in sports. Meta stressed that games and sports have become one of the most watched and awaited activity globally. He said sports has now become the most recognised profession and a prominent career to pursue. Later, the special guest kicked off the first match of football at the event. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on Air app and YouTube channel AIR News, Kohima. 
Narcotics PS personnel manning the checkpoint at Kuzama detected and seized 50 soap cases of heroin weighing 650 grams from the possession of four persons. SP Crime and PRO Police Headquarters today informed in a press release that all the four persons hail from Senapati district of Manipur. Police said that in this connection, a case has been registered for investigation. Kohima Deputy Commissioner Gregory Tejavele has asked district officers to take up the responsibility to make upcoming Republic Day a successful one. He asked the officers to inform all their respective subordinates and staff to ensure a good participation on the day. The DC was today addressing a meeting in the capital in view of the upcoming 73rd Republic Day celebration. The meeting discussed work distribution with the NGOs and district officers for the Republic Day. Home Affairs Ministry has asked states and union territories administration to ensure strict compliance of the provisions of the Flag Code of India 2002 and the Prevention of Insults to National Honour Act 1971. In a letter written to the Chief Secretaries and Administrators, Union Home Ministry has said that Indian flag represents hopes and aspirations of the people. It said lack of awareness has been observed amongst people and organisations about the laws and practices of displaying national flag. It has been directed to the states and UTs to ensure that the use of only paper flags by the public on the occasion of important national, cultural and sports events. It also asked to ensure that paper flags are not discarded or thrown on the ground after the event and flags must be disposed of according to the dignity of the flag. Central government has made it clear before the Supreme Court that there is no COVID-19 vaccination mandate and that vaccination is not mandatory. Responding to a plea seeking ease of access to vaccination to persons with disabilities, the central government has submitted that its guidelines do not envisage any forcible vaccination without obtaining consent of the concerned individual. The government has stated that no person can be forced to be vaccinated against their wishes. National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, has issued a detailed advisory to the centre, states and union territories for the welfare of persons affected by leprosy. In the advisory, NHRC has called for the removal of discriminatory legal provisions in over 90 laws in a time-bound manner. It is also recommended that the state government should establish a helpline to ensure prompt reporting and medical attention and provide and expand mobile-based daily consultation services for persons affected by leprosy. In the advisory, NHRC has recommended that the union and state governments should create awareness that leprosy is fully curable. It said that awareness should be created that a person suffering from leprosy no longer remains contagious after receipt of the first dose of MDT and may lead a normal married life, can have children, can take part in social events and go to work, school and college as normal. The Commission has asked all concerned authorities to implement the recommendations in the advisory and submit an action taken report within three months. Supreme Court today agreed to hear a PIL seeking direction to the Election Commission of India to deregister political parties that do not disclose details pertaining to criminal cases of their election candidates along with the reason for their selection. A bench of the Apex Court, headed by the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramanam, although agreed to hear the plea, has not fixed any date for listing. And now to end the news, here are the main points again. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia congratulates all young people who got vaccinated. MLA and advisor R. King advises heads of departments to be responsible for all-round development of the newly created Zeminu district. Nagalin reports 89 fresh COVID-19 cases and 104 recoveries. An advisor to Nagalin Chief Minister Abu Mehta says government is trying to facilitate sports infrastructure and resources. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.